was just this passion and this other this other kind of drive, you know, and this camaraderie. I think something that I've learned is to be able to take a step back and, and see the bigger picture. I, I think the sky's the limit for us. We owe a lot to the guys that came here and, and started the, the games and they showed people how to play and it took a while but now you see the players and they, they got skills and this is just this is because of the middle school passing this is because of the high school. What we did in those early days what a lot of those guys did in those early days to try to get it into the schools I think it's paid dividends because I think if you look now in 2020 well pre-COVID 2020 um, you know we, we've got rugby everywhere you know middle school high school great weekend competitions everybody loving it. So it wasn't all, oh my God, you know, we're working, 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 working like slaves just to grow rugby. No, it wasn't that at all. It was, it was fun. It was fun. It was a challenge. It was an accomplishment. That core of guys was responsible for a lot of the success that we had, you know, in the, in the 15s and in the 7s um, series, so in, in Asia. So, you know, those guys have gotten old, so we need to replace those guys. And there's, a, there's another group coming up, right? So we need to... Uh, to get to bring them in and kind of uh, mentor them and get them to the same point. But yeah, you're, we got lucky with that, that core group of guys because they were very committed and they were very good players. Just creating the relationships uh, amongst the local community and it's just like you said, we started with like me and Ryan, to be truth be told. And now we have all these kids playing in all these schools. The level of skill, like I was very happy and I think very capable to be coaching rugby in 2003, four and five you know, because I was teaching people how to ruck or how to scrummage or, you know, don't don't pass forward or there's no blocks, right? But now I think our, our level of play is such is such that, that you know, you got to be a really, really top tier kind of coach to get all the, the nuance of the game because our players are just that good. Adversity is what rugby gives you, man. Oh, there's always hurdles, man. <laughs> I mean, look, there's, there, there's major hurdle. Number one was um, funding. It's all of that saying it since the beginning. We had facilities, we had fields, the government can just give us land. We have one field, why not give us two, three more? Have it every place. Some secure form of, you know, uh, funding that we can actually utilize in different ways for men and women. Um, and I think it starts with our government support. It comes down to money. Uh, we're usually sending people that can afford a trip and not because they're the best person to go. And I mean, it is what it is on that end, but it would be a lot better if the players can actually focus and train for the task at hand and not have to worry about paying for their trip. So if you just look at other sports that are successful for adults, looking at soccer, even women's football who have good numbers, um, they have clubs that they can go to in an off season. For rugby, it's you leave high school and then the next step is national or international rugby. And that's, that's an intimidating, step to take. We are beyond the days where you know you could sort of play a game and then pick up a whistle and referee the next game or just sort of put a jersey on and for one team and then switch over to the next team and sort of hang out and play with them. There was never a shortage of rugby players. We could find players there's never you have a game there's gonna be guys who want to show up and want to play. Now uh, it's hard to get anybody to show up and play a, a game of uh, 15s. I think that's the biggest challenge. I think if there's more guys playing rugby on a regular basis here, we would get better and then we can um, have a bigger player pool. Versity is to decide, right or left, straight forward. Uh, always go forward. When we're seeing kids on Guam get college scholarships or the opportunity to play collegiate rugby and collegiate sports, it's a uh, it's great because it kind of just confirms what we have been doing and the effort that we've been investing. And, you know, their success is our success.
We're Islanders and we're just, we have an imagination and it speaks on the field for ourselves. There's an amount of heart that, that's immeasurable when it comes to our athletes. We compete with, uh, with everything we have. You know, it just amazes me when I see these, when I used to see these young kids, how physical and how great at defense they are at tackling and just um, fearless. My son's playing rugby at, um, in college at Dartmouth and, you know, he's going through other experiences that, that I didn't have and, you know, he's enjoying it. I got to go watch Matias Calvo play twice last year. You know, I was like, all right, I'm going to go up and watch him. And then they made it to the Ivy League Championship. I was like, oh, I'm not going to miss that one. You know, so I hop in the car, drive up the road a little bit, and I get to see one of our one of our own who who wasn't even born when the game was introduced on the island playing Division One Ivy League rugby in the championship for the Ivy League um, conference it was absolutely phenomenal. I'm I'm just in amazed because uh, the last three years have been a huge growth I think in terms of our collegiate players I mean like we sent we sent almost eight to ten girls off island so hopefully they come back they participate and I mean just boosting the ranks at a young age we're gonna we're gonna I think we're gonna surprise a lot of people so when we're talking about players coming up they're they're coming up and they're seeing these these uh, people that are doing it on the on a bigger stage you know and I think it's just it's just kind of showing that like hey man these there's an opportunity here. Just to be able to make it onto the USA team, like as a little guy from Guam, like was huge for me. Here I was, this little kid from Guam. I still trying to make a name for myself. Got selected to play for USA to represent USA rugby in Ireland. Being able to make it to that, into that level, into that space where I was up against 70 of the best um, players from across the country at my age at the time. I was always reverting back to how would we play on Guam. Playing for the USA national team was, was one of the highlights of my life. One of the pioneers in that regard is uh, Zach Pangalinen. Side. Top try scorer, in fact, for Houston. This one comes down the throat of Maximo de Archibald. Denver Barbarian legend as he kicks over the top. Bounces up. Soccer skills there from the Guam International. Still going. Pangalinen. Captain soccer and rugby for two different countries. Zachary Pangalinen. Uh, born and raised on Guam. Uh, I've been playing rugby for about a solid... 12 years, at least competitive rugby for 12 years. Um, yeah, man, and uh, the where I started was obviously on Guam in high school. Um, the people who influenced me, uh, had a big influence on me was, uh, you know, Rob Millay. Uh, Rob Millay, Anthony Keenan, uh, all, the, uh, all the old soaks from, uh, that are affiliated with Guam Rugby Club. 2009, uh, I did get to go for a couple tours with the USA team, but the big one was happened on November 12th. I remember this. November 12, 2012, was my first proper test cap, uh, my first game with the uh, with the USA team. Um, so before that, uh, when I did get the call, man, I was I was excited. I was un it was an unreal feeling. I had to actually send the email to my coach saying, "Hey, I got this email. What does it mean?" I actually sent it to Ryan Claros too, and I was like, he's like, what does it mean? He was like, dude, just go. I, I just kept doing well, and so they finally called me back. And uh, my first test was on the 12th against Tonga. I played fullback, I started at fullback, and then I moved into 10. It's just phenomenal to watch him trailblaze for many others to follow. Um, Zach is, is a, a a unique and outstanding example of what can be running out into the lights and then just seeing the crowd of people and it's just like it's overwhelming you know door of opportunity it opens walk right through that door and keep working hard don't ever give up and if you think about giving up just look at how far you've come
there's something just special about being able to represent your own island, represent your home and your people, the, one of the tiniest parts of the world, go abroad and, and express yourself against another country and you know, show what you got. Guam drifting back, looking to reform. He gives it inside and they're on the board with their first try of the weekend. Representing, representing the island and stuff, you know, that was, that was kind of my dream growing up as an athlete uh, and playing all these sports was having an opportunity to do that. Pick it up. Oh, and it's good to pick a great play by Guam. Found a great bit of rugby. Maybe they just said, and oh, he's offloaded again. Here we go. What's happening with this team? My gosh, they're looking good. They're looking extremely good. Well done to Guam. Great play, great clear out. And they've just made literally three quarters of the field. Big Pollock and Ryan, he's going for the try line. What an awesome try of the tournament that is. That is outstanding. Getting a chance to represent Guam, my first go, it was it's just one of those moments that you got to cherish for the rest of your life. I'll tell you this, I brought dirt with, with me from Guam everywhere we went. I don't know how, I got it in some way, somehow. But every time we played on the field, especially Hong Kong, put that on the field. Just, we're here. It's going to make me get emotion, but that's... You know? Going to the international stage, competing against countries with millions of people. Um, when they look at us, they, a lot of times, we're underestimated. Three Tagualta sisters in this squad didn't make it to Hong Kong. Straight hard running from Kitigua, and she gives it inside. And they're on the board with their first try of the weekend. Good work by Guam. I really consider rugby one of the main pillars in my life. It's brought me around the world. Um, it's brought me friendships that I will have for the rest of my life. As the final siren goes for this pool game, Guam is on the charge. Guam, it's their number one. Can they put some more points on the board? It's Olivia Elliott. Olivia Elliott. Elliott is in for a try. When you're on a rugby field playing a, a game, with 15 other guys who are willing to sacrifice their body. I mean, it, it, it's, you, you gain a different level of friendship with those guys that will carry on. Rugby's had a huge impact in my life. I mean, and it's, and it's nothing but positive. Being able to, to coach kids and know kids and meet them and, and, and help them achieve you know, their goals, it's just really, uh, it's just real special. The sport of rugby has impacted my life in a very positive manner. It's built a brotherhood for me, folks that I call brothers, that I will have for the rest of my life. I, I wouldn't be the person I am without having um, played rugby for Guam, having coached rugby for Guam, and then having been involved with Guam rugby. I just wouldn't be the same person. The passion and the, the, the pride, which was something that sort of caught my eye. But if you can continue on and say, hey, I'm representing my people, my, uh, the land I'm from, and also the future generations. I, I don't see why uh, both men's and women's team for Guam, right? Uh, can actually finish top in the uh, seventh uh, trophy and then qualify for the series. These playoff games have tried a good step by number five. Whoa! She left the defense standing still. It looked like they were looking for parking. Great job by Guam's number five, Yelana Garcia. The body types and the physicality and the rugby IQ of the Guam, of what I've seen so far of the Guam players, I think that you guys definitely have the ability to be top contenders within Asia um, in the next five to 10 years. There is a community aspect to this game that is second to none of any other game.
I'm not joking, man. Just about everything good in my life has got some connection to rugby. Ache and pain. Oh my God, I'm damaged. You know what I mean? But the love of the game.